Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another the Sports Give you another week, another weekly predictions. Today, we are coming at you with our NFL Week 13 predictions. The playoff picture is starting to get rounded out. Obviously, some teams can no longer make the playoffs. We're going over. We're going to be going over each game, uh, analysis for each game, and uh, yeah, obviously, we'll be getting our picks. You'll see our records so far for each week. The the table is getting a little bit, uh, not the table, the, the rankings are getting a little bit close. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all rounding out. The NFL season crazy uh, is almost at the end, I guess, but you know, we still have some time. We still have four more weeks or five more weeks technically since, um, week 13, but yes, we are getting, we're going to get into the video as always. I'm joined by my, my two wonderful hosts, Serge Crowley and Dylan Shalom. Without further ado, let's get into the videos. Always, guys, do make sure to like, subscribe, follow us on social media. We are very mu much um, getting a lot more active on TikTok, so make sure you guys go check us out um, over there. We've been, you know, obviously posting a ton of stuff, so make sure you guys go check us out over there. But as always, NFL Week 13 predictions. Going into our record, Surge overtakes Charlie. Uh, Charlie cannot make it today, but you guys will still see his picks. Um, he makes it out over Charlie at 112 and 65. I have climbed up on Dylan. Dylan, you should get a little bit scared as I am two games That's back. I've been getting, I've been getting, I've been gaining some ground. And then uh, obviously Surge stays on top. It's going to be Surge or Charlie who wins it, but we'll see. Um, and then I stay at I mean, the never bottom. Say that, only 10 games back. I'm, I'm making, I'm making the comeback. It's it, I'm making the, the comeback, strides. but let's get in to uh the picks we're going into game number one and that is thursday night football in i was gonna say an interesting one it actually isn't in hindsight obviously seeing the both of these teams thanksgiving performances obviously both team both teams lost the saints in much more convincing fashion than the cowboys um but this is i mean you know this i i always try and i'm trying to give sympathy to the saints when they're just offensively this team i mean really looking at the transformation from when they had Drew Brees, this team, I mean, they just don't have anyone quarterback, receiver, running back. This team basically has an O line at, at best on offense. And besides that, there's no talent. Serge, I'm going to you first. What do you got for this game? Yeah, both of these teams looked pretty un um, unimpressive on Thanksgiving. And I think Dallas in particular, uh, in particular, I thought they were going to, I thought they were going to beat the Raiders, but I, but it was really, on offense, they seem to be very shaky and inconsistent without Cooper and C.D. Lamb. And defensively, they were also a bit nah, – they weren't that great, really, on either side of the ball. But going against the Saints team, like Kean said, has no talent on offense. And you're probably getting Cooper back. I'm not sure about Lamb, but he also might be back. I think I've got to give it to the Cowboys here. Dylan? Yeah, I think both teams are incredibly lucky to be playing uh, on Thursday night – after another Thursday game. So they're not on as short rest, especially for these teams, because they're very, very injury ridden. The Saints obviously devoid of pretty much all their talent as Michael Thomas is out for the year. Alvin Kamara doesn't look to be back anytime soon. Jameis Winston out for the year. So they're really rolling with a team of practice squad players with a great old line. And then I think Dallas, especially with that very, very turnover hungry defense is going to be able to eat that alive. So I don't really think that they'll be able to put up with the pressure they get uh, placed on them. Give me Dallas pretty quickly. Yeah. I, I mean, we've talked about games that are like that easy to predict the easiest game to predict. I think this is the easiest game of the NFL season to predict. I think you look at how explosive this Dallas team can be and defensively how much improvements they can be. And Dylan, don't make that face because you got embarrassed when you said that the Jaguars Bills game I was. I um, so uh, I think that this, this will quite easily be a Cowboys win. I think that backups will go into the end of the game. Um, I think the Saints team has nothing on offense and, and a Dallas team that definitely, I think a great way to put it turnover hungry, I think with all their young players and obviously Micah Parsons, who's been fantastic despite how poorly they played against the Raiders. Micah Parsons is consistently in the backfield. This guy can play defensive tackle, defensive end, outside linebacker, middle linebacker, slot corner. This guy is versatile as it comes um, for linebackers easily. I think defensive rookie of the year. And I think he could be in the conversation for defensive player of the year, how he's playing right now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go Cowboys easily as well. Let's move on to the next game where we have a uh, interesting one. The Texans who, who fell both teams, again, losing divisional matchup. Obviously the Texans falling to the jets. And the Colts close, but putting up 30, letting up 38 against uh, the Bucks. I, I think a game that they look pretty good in to begin it. Um, but again, it all comes down to in games that Jonathan Taylor has rushed over 100 yards, they're 6-0. and And then in games that he has rushed under 100 yards, they're now 0-6. He rushed for 84 he today. Over 100 yards. Uh, yeah, no, he didn't. He ran for 84 today um, and a touchdown. Uh, I, I 
believe he over no. uh, on no, the I, scrimmage. He ran, oh. No, he ran for 84 um, today, and they they obviously lost. But Dylan, what do you think of this one? I think again, a game that's pretty not again. No games are obvious, but a game that I would say is is quite easy to predict. Yeah, uh, the Texans did not look like the team that went out and took down the Tennessee Titans two weeks ago by any means. And the Colts, even though they ended up losing to the Bucks, they show that they're in here to battle with the big boys. So why should they not be able to absolutely take down a minnow? Shouldn't be a problem uh, for them. Give me the Colts. Yeah. The Colts have looked at, even in that loss, they've looked really impressive as of recent on both sides of the ball. I think Jonathan Taylor, even though he didn't rush a hundred, saw a pretty good game. Carson Wentz had a very good game. And that offensive line is, again, one of the best in football. And I think their defense didn't have a great performance. I still think they'll have a much better performance against, like Dylan said, a minnow in the Houston Texans. And I can't I can't see this going any other way. So give me the Colts. Yeah, I'm going to have to piggyback off that, obviously, Texans team. that I think Tyra Taylor, um, you know, obviously, besides that John Franklin Myers tip pick, which I think happens every year. We see that every year where a defensive lineman mm-hmm. tips it and then picks it off. Um, and then, obviously, like you guys said, the Colts, a team, I think, the, the past two weeks have really opened my eyes to teams that I always thought would just be very average issue. The Colts and the 49ers and both teams that, that went in and beat or obviously the Colts and win, but went and competed with good teams. Um, and I think the Colts, obviously Carson Wentz definitely opened my eyes. Someone who I consistently have said, I just haven't seen this year. I haven't heard his name, but obviously, you know, he has that arm and, and, uh, you know, really good decision-making. I think that play where he kind of um, he, uh, the play to Jack Doyle, where he rushed out to the right and then threw it, it was a great play. He kind of, you know, moved him upfield really, really good playmaking from Wentz. And I think he's definitely a guy who can win games. And against, obviously I'll say it for the third time, the minnow of a team in the Texans. I think this will be a easy win to bring the Colts to seven and six. And obviously, you know, they can hope they can push for some wild card spot, but let's move on to the next game where we have me and Dylan's rivalry, the giants against the dolphins, um, the giants, both teams winning giants, beating the Eagles at home, the dolphins beating the Panthers at home defensively fantastic performance in the Dolphins, kind of the, 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 the only part of that Dolphins team that's looked really, really good this year. Um, but Dylan, I'm gonna go to you first. What do you got in this one? You see, I'm going to have to go with the Dolphins to save face. I do not have a confident opinion on this game because the Giants absolutely shut down Jalen Hurts and that scares me. But I also think that the Dolphins are going to be able to beat down the Giants offense without even breaking a sweat. So it's a really, really tough game. And when I'm in this position, I'm going to have to roll with my guys. And I also think we have more playmakers on offense that will be able to make a difference. But by no means am I any whatso- in any way whatsoever am I confident about it. I'm going with my Dolphins, though. Yeah, um, I'm going to go with the Giants. I think this is a toss-up because you look at – the strengths of both teams, both poor quarterbacks and then really good defenses and then kind of weapons around them. In terms of weapons on offense, when the Giants are healthy, they quite obviously have better weapons than the Dolphins receiving core and running back wise. Um, then offensive line, up to the Giants have a bit of an edge, but obviously that Dolphins defense was able to get in the backfield. Jalen Phillips, that breakout game with three sacks, he was in the Carolina backfield the entire game. Um, and then secondary wise, I think Javon Holland is one of the steals of the draft. This guy's been fantastic for this. I mean, uh, really, you kind of look at him, has the range for a safety and has those ball hawking skills, obviously getting that interception. Um, although, albeit it was against Cam Newton. Again, I'm not confident with going with the Giants here. I think this is definitely a 50-50 game. And I think, like Dylan said, you're going to go with your guys in this one. But, you know, the Giants, I feel like, like the Saints of, of, of past, have kind of been up, down, up, down, the kind of win, lose, win, lose. Um, and I know their record doesn't like mathematically indicate that. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the Giants again. You guys know um, Daniel Jones, I, I think, is done. Um, so uh, I, th- I think I personally think it's time to clean house for the Giants go- going into this next offseason. But with Galladay back, obviously, you got Saquon back. I think offensively, you know, on the given day, my new favorite saying this team can, can win games and defensively they are great three turnover or three interceptions um, against Jalen Hurst today, but sir, as the non-biased like to, fan, what is your pick for this one? One sec. I would just like to point out that the Miami Dolphins held Cam Newton to a 4.7 in the passer rating today. Yeah. Well, Cam Newton was not a good quarterback either way. So anyways, four passes. this yeah. is, I feel like this is a, like you said, it's like a toss up. I think it's two teams that I feel like are very similar. They have, solid secondaries they have solid defenses but the offense is a big question mark 
But out of the two teams, I feel like the Dolphins have been getting a, a, together a bit more than the Giants. And I think since they're on a four-game winning streak, I feel like at the moment it's hard to pick against them. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're I think I think that winning streak's gonna be snapped soon. But going against a team like the Giants, or I, I feel like they could easily win this. But week to week, they're a team that I feel like are very hard to predict. They could easily win this, but they could easily lose this. But I'm gonna go with the Dolphins. I would not be surprised if this game goes either way, though. All right, let's move on to the next game where we have another divisional matchup in the Lions and the Vikings. And, I mean, the Lions, unlucky and unlucky and unlucky and unlucky. This team probably is the worst luck I've ever seen. Losing to a field goal against the Bears, who classically have been terrible at kicking game-winning field goals. Um, and then the Vikings, uh, I think that the, at the point we knew they, they were going to lose this game was when Kirk Cousins threw that or, uh, that pick, and Kirk Cousins has been fantastic the entire year. This guy um, had a 20 to or 21 to 2 interception ratio going into the game. Then he threw a pick. I'm not sure if he threw another. I don't think he did. Yeah, he no, only, I think he only threw, threw one. Two, inter- two touchdowns and a pick and 238 yards. So pretty good game. Uh, again, you guys know what I think. This, this 49ers offense has been really good. Um, this is a t- I, I was going to say this is a tough one. Excuse me. Um, I, I think, you know, the Lions, every single week they compete. Um, and I think, unfortunately, they don't have the players that can end games, that can finish games. I think that's what's been losing them the games when you look at it kind of in hindsight. So I'm going to go for the Vikings again. But again, this is another game where the Vikings have put up 40 points. Um, so you really never know what the Lions, but as of recent, the Lions have been able to kind of hang with every team they've gone up against, it's kind of that last push where they've lost it or they've stepped off the gas a little bit. So I'm going to go for the Vikings in this one. I think a, a good divisional win for the Vikings um, and the Lions fall to 0 and 11 and 1. Um, but who knows? Serge, what do you got? I've got to go with the Vikings here. And it's like, it's a battle of a, two coaches that I think both are I feel like on the hot seat Mike Zimmer because he's coaching a very good team and he's just not getting the results that they should be getting on Dan Campbell because as good as he's been in recent games his Mm. clock management skills and his like big time they've been it's been terrible and even Mm. with the poor team that he's managing you can't be oh ten and one in the NFL Mm -hmm. so for that reason this is a big game for both teams but I think the Vikings are so much more talented than the lines that I just can't see a way that they lose this Dylan Yep, I have a statement to make to all fans who have stuck with us throughout the entirety of this series. After 13 weeks of the NFL season, I would like to un- renounce my religion. Wow. I am no longer a devout follower of the Dan Campbell Church of Brooklyn. Can't lose 10 games in a row, or can't go uh, winless in 11 games. You can't do it. And yeah. for that reason, I will no longer be referring to Dan Campbell as my messiah. And the Vikings will win this game by 30 or more. There we mm. go. Wow. That, that is going to be clipped and Our posted somewhere. News. Um, that's, that's breaking news. This, of course, will be the first week that he wins now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, f- I feel like it will. I, I feel like Dylan curses teams. I really hope. I really do. I yeah. really do. Yeah. Anti-curses. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the next game uh, where we have the – Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. And there's so many divisional games this week. I feel like mm. it starts off where there's not a lot and then they get to the next one. But obviously the Buccaneers, a shaky performance. Um, and I think a lot of people have been saying like the Buccaneers don't look as good. If you look at the numbers year to year or from last year to this year, they're if a little bit better, actually. Same record. Um, and, you know, they look kind of the same offensively. Great. Let They found a running back in Leonard Fournette who's been absolutely phenomenal the past couple of weeks um, getting four touchdowns in a Col- against a Colts defense. That's really good. A Colts front, a Colts front seven, especially. And then the Falcons uh, beating the Jacksonville Jaguars, not much uh, going up against a Trevor Lawrence has been incredibly disappointing this year. Um, but you know, Cordell Patterson getting him back. He's been fantastic. Also two touchdowns rushing. I don't know if he's supposed to receive or running back. He just plays football. Um, but uh, yeah, he's whatever. I'm going to go for the Buccaneers here. Uh, Buccaneers currently eight and three, I think, or eight and four eight and three eight and four because they had their bye week right have they had their bye week yeah they have yeah so eight and four eight and three eight and three eight and three so i think they'll go to nine and three um and push for that double digit win season uh again it comes down to talent wise and also the falcons like unlike they were last year have not been able to play and beat good teams they've kind of been beating the teams that that you know obviously are are under 500 so i'm going to go for the buccaneers in this one um again pretty pretty uh easy pick here but uh, Dylan, what do you think? Let me ask everyone who is watching this. Who do you think is going to win this match? I think <laughs> Great you guys question. All, I think you guys all know it is not difficult. 
You don't have to think about it. If anyone would like to argue with me in the comments, uh. I would gladly <laughs> accept your challenge because there's no way you're beating me. Give me the bucks. Yep. I love well, how Dylan chooses this game to say that. Like to say, yeah. Because like, the Falcons could win. I mean, I'm not gonna say they can't. Can. Yeah, but there are no one's most gonna games it. I will say the team could win. Besides this, like the Saints Cowboys, I'd be like, all right, yeah, Dylan, that makes sense. But this game, it's like <laughs> Don't just pick your battles, man. I mean, you I'm do. I'm picking you, my man. battle right here. I don't think there's a chance on earth the Falcons win this game. You can clip Uh-oh, this. Oh, is this gonna be another Bills Jaguars? You can moment? clip this. But all right. all right, but yeah, Buck should win this. That's what I I think. There's and no. That's the search canal analysis. Amazing. I mean, that's what we love. Quick and to the point. <laughs> all right, next game: Jets, mm. Eagles. Both teams, not both teams. Excuse me. Eagles coming off a disappointing loss, one they would have liked to win away divisional matchup against the giants and the jets beating the Texans um, in the trash bowl of the century. Um, Zach Wilson still um, has some deficiency in his brain. Um, Cause I don't know what he was doing uh, on some of those plays, but they won, which I think is good for Zach. Serge, I'm going to you first as a jets fan. What's the, what's the outlook for this one? I think we lose because of the reason why is because we have, I think, I don't know if we're still the worst run defense. We have at least one of the worst run defenses in the, in the NFL. And the Eagles have, I'm sure, the best run rush. I think the best. I th- they don't, realistically, the Eagles do not have the, like, putting stats yeah. aside, the Eagles do not have the best rush offense, but statistically, yes, they do. Yeah, because they uh, they use like four different running backs. Yeah, I don't know how the hell. Teams, yeah. <laughs> but it's weird. But they do have a really good run offense. And our defense is very, again, it's very young and it's very injured. And, we're, and our off, and Zach Wilson, he's, Obviously, he improved second half against the Texans, but I think going against a team that can really take the ball away, especially with big play slay, I think it's going to be another tough outing for him, and I can't really predict against the Eagles this week. I think they'll bounce back, and the Jets just aren't going to win two games in a row. I just know this. Yeah, uh, I think big play slay houses two pick sixes on Zach Wilson. That is a bull. I think Zach Wilson gets sacked four times. I think Zach Wilson has four turnovers. Um, and I think offensively, this Jets team is just terrible. But the defense, again, Serge, as much as we, you know, young, injured, they can be good. Obviously, that off, that that front seven can – not front seven because they don't really have any good linebackers. That front four, um, you know, is, is able to generate pressure. Obviously, after that Bengals game, they were non-existent. But then against the Texans, they kind of came back. Franklin Myers, obviously, you know, definitely very underrated, that big interception against the Texans. So I think the Eagles took a bit of a hit, obviously. Um, and, and I mean, as much as we hate this Jets secondary, as much as I have, Bryce Hall is fantastic. I know. Um, Bryce Hall is a really, really good cornerback. Um, I think he played really well. So I think he was instrumental in, 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 in you know, covering some of the players and obviously um, covering Brandon Cooks, who's been really efficient the entire year. Um, and, and I think the Jets, again, this is a game I could see the Jets winning. Um, but I, I think Zach Wilson – being turnover prone going up against the Eagles to me is a really bad matchup that I'm not going to favor in, in the jets way. So I'm going to go for the Eagles, but Dylan, what do you got? I'm also going to go for the Eagles. What are the records of these two teams? Just curious. Eagles five are and seven, five and seven. I think. Yeah. yeah I was I really looking and... for the Eagles. I know the jets are terrible, but if the Eagles had drafted me, Wait, you, just let him Dylan... that. you just let him say that Serge. I mean, if the Eagles what if I can't drafted, come back at this point. Yeah, I've if tried. If the Eagles but, drafted like, me instead of Jalen Rager, they would be six and six right now. Yeah, no, they wouldn't. No, because they I would wouldn't. not be they on would, their first team roster. They would be the exact same. They would be the exact <laughs> I would not be on their first team roster, and someone would have caught that pass against the Giants. The two passes. He the dropped two, two game winning touchdowns. One of them was difficult. One of them wasn't. No. Either way, I'm getting the, the I'm first getting one that was that was on the side, like the first one where he's streaking down and it was over the shoulder dropped. And the he second could have one, caught that. Yeah. The he second could have one caught was that. And as the 18th overall pick, you have to catch that. The but second one, the second one that was Justin right, Jefferson, he catches yeah. that. The second no one that was one. right at him in his chest plate and he dropped. That, that one's the one I'm saying that I yeah. could have called. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I'm getting out of hand here doesn't matter which Jalen Rager shows up. I mean, the bad one and the kind of bad one, they're still going to beat the Jets. Give me these. <laughs> Very well said. All right, let's move on to the next game where we have the Cardinals and the Bears. Cardinals by week this week. Am I? Yep. Yeah. Yep, there um, guys and, really I think Cardinals are. and Bears, right? Bears? Oh, no, Bears are not. Really Bears really good time too. for a bye week now. Yeah, um, Bears winning against the Lions. 
if you think that's impressive, congrats. Um, and then uh, the Cardinals, obviously on that bye week, which I think they needed because um, of that injury. They definitely needed it. The mm-hmm. offense that's very injured. And I'm not sure if Hopkins is back or Murray is back. I think um, Tyler should be back. Yeah, but I don't think back. Hopkins is back. I'm not sure. Um, not but again, sure. offensively, without Hopkins, who has – been very underwhelming on the on the the Cardinals, I will say, um, the past two years. Um, he's still, you know, uh, I'm not, I mean, not underwhelming. He's still Hopkins, but you know, not the whatever. They, I'm, I'm they not, don't need him. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, they don't need weapons. him. That's what I'm trying to say. Rondell Moore, you know, obviously, I don't, I don't think AJ Green's back. But even if you have Rondell Moore and and Kirk, um, I think Christian Kirk's been very Christian Kirk and Zach Ertz has been really him. good. Zach Ertz seems like a great pickup. Um, and then it's an offensive line that's decent and defensively, um, I think a secondary that's been able to to cause turnovers and obviously that front that front seven has been good as well. So I'm going to go for the Cardinals here. Um, but I think again the Bears have looked all right under Andy Dalton. Um, but I'm going to go for the Cardinals and an easy one here. Uh, this is a very yeah. easy week to predict. I will say this, so far. Yeah. yeah I, I, think, I haven't really had many problems yeah. and going into this one. I don't see that changing. However, if Kyler Murray and Deandre Hopkins want to do their thing where they say they're not going to play two minutes before the game and screw over hmm. all their fantasy owners, then the bears have a chance. So I think, think that this is the Cardinals game because I think the bye week helps them out a lot but I wouldn't put it past the Bears to take them out so I'm gonna go with the Cardinals yeah I think no matter who's playing if it's Colt McCoy I think no matter who because the Bears are just so like such a they just can't game plan at all they were had they played against Tyler Huntley and the Ravens they shouldn't win that game the Cardinals have a solid defense and Colt McCoy I think is better than Tyler Huntley so I think no matter who plays for the Cardinals, whether it's Hopkins and Murray or McCoy and Kirk, they should still win no matter what because they're they're a good football team. And I think going against the Bears, who are a very dysfunctional football team, I don't really see why the Bears would win no matter who's playing. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one. We have the Chargers and Bengals. Um, the Chargers really started off really well, and I think Dylan, I'm not sure if you said this take, but you said I don't I don't know if you said this preseason. Um, that the bang that the charge yeah you did say that don't 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 give me that don't pretend like all your takes are good <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just saying I... dylan hits and then he wildly strikes out and then it's like remember that one time i hit yeah i remember that one time i <laughs> I, I, I don't like to bring up my past successes because i know there will be a lot because yeah, you know we'll come back um i mean i credit to you the chargers have been I mean, it's weird because they're still in contention to make, play- I think, make playoffs. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, Every, yeah. Everyone in the AFC yeah. other than the Texans, the Jaguars, and the Jets are still in serious contention to make the playoffs right now. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, the Chargers, to me, just have been great. And I think losing to the Broncos and letting up 28 to me has kind of been like, all right, they probably won't make playoffs. And it just – it comes down to is it Herbert's fault? No. And you guys know I love Brandon Staley. So I don't know what the problem is. I think it's a defense that on the back end is is aging. So I think maybe clearing some of that out and then bringing in new corners. But then again, you kind of look at the games and offensively, they've definitely been off as of recent. And we know the Broncos have been have played the role of 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 upset or the you know the past couple of weeks, obviously being the Cowboys at home. But then the Bengals up and down, up and down, and they're you know manhandled the Steelers. I did a reaction video to that. Um, to be fair, it was Potato Ben. Um, so. Mm-hmm. You know, credit is is due, maybe. Uh, but you know, I, nevertheless, I, I think th- the the Bengals' offense to me looks like an offense that can make that can compete for a Super Bowl. But then the Bengals, consistency wise, just haven't been there. And I think you look at other contenders, and the Bengals just don't have that yet. I think within two years they could be there. Um, but offensively, they have all the pieces. Joe Mixon stays healthy. This guy's a top 10 running back. He's been fantastic. Nope. Um, the past four weeks, really, really good getting in the end zone. And and you know what I noticed? He's huge. Like, yeah. height-wise, I think he's taller than Burrow. Um, I might be wrong, but he looks like That's he looks insane. like when Derrick Henry stands hmm. next to Ryan Tannehill. You know how, like, Derrick Henry's ginormous. And yeah. again, not comparing him to Derrick Henry. You always have to specify when you include Derrick Henry with another running back that you're not <laughs> saying they're as good as him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think the 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 in the air catch to T Higgins really surprised me. I was like, that was a Madden play in real life. That like, how did that like actually bullying. happen? Yeah, I was like, how did that actually? The corner was back to the end zone and or you know facing out of the end zone. That was just you know whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for the Bengals here. I think the Chargers mm-hmm. lose two in a row. Um, but th- this I think is the toughest game yet. I want to hear what you guys think, but Dylan, what do you think about this one? 
I also think the Bengals are going to win this game. And I think I can pinpoint the struggles and the successes of the Chargers on a particular player. And it was the early season form of Mike Williams yeah. shutting down in the second half of the year. Because Which I think we them, all knew was going to happen. He bailed them out of four games. And they won those games against Cleveland, against KC. Uh, I can't pinpoint the other ones exactly, but I remember there was. And he completely bailed them out. He's caught for over 100 yards and two touchdowns. And he, he went – ballistic and now that they're double teaming him triple teaming him putting their best corners on him keenan allen's able to show out more but he's not making the same impact that mike williams made on the football games that is why they're not the same that is why herbert is struggling that being said the Bengals went out and destroyed the steelers they're gonna go out and beat the chargers i think that's all i really need to say this is tough because it's two teams i feel like are very like they can be good on one day and they can be just average on another day. And I feel like the Chargers could very easily win this game. But I think the problem with facing that team like the Bengals is that they're too multidimensional. Like they can run the ball with Mixon. They or they can just throw it to a number of weapons, whether it's Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, or Jamar Chase. Because it's not it could, all three of those guys are extremely dangerous. And you got a solid quarterback in Joe Burrow and a not bad defense for against uh, uh Chargers offense that's been pretty so so recently. So even though I feel like the Bengals, it's hard for me to picture them winning three games in a row. Logic points to them winning against the Chargers, so I've got to go with Cincinnati here. But I wouldn't be surprised if, it's, if there was an upset. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next game where we have the mm. struggling Trevor Lawrence-led Jacksonville Jaguars. And then the, the – Struggling? Los- yeah. Um, Two struggling teams. Yeah. Struggling Los Angeles Rams who lost to the Packers – which, you know, we could have predicted, but uh, Odo Beckham caught a 50 something yard catch. That's great. Uh, but all right, let's, let's move on to the picks. This is an easy one for me. I'm going to go Rams. I don't have much to explain here. Um, Trevor Lawrence is struggling. Trevor Lawrence is concerning again, give him three years, but his decision-making was awful. He treated that fourth and 10 that was deciding the game. Like it was a first and 10 in the first quarter, throwing it to the ground wide open and he threw it away. Um, so that's concerning to me, but I'm gonna go for the Rams here. Yeah, I've got to go with the Rams here too. Even though they're on a three and losing streak, they're luckily getting to play the Jaguars that again are just so out of sync. I don't think they're offensively where they really invested. I feel like they just haven't really shown up yet. I think some of their weapons really haven't showed up. Lavisca Chenault, he was projected to have a pretty good season. He hasn't really been been on the. He hasn't really shown up much this season. Trevor Lawrence, he hasn't been amazing. And the Rams, even though they've lost three straight, they've lost three straight to what I would say are relatively good teams, the Titans, the Niners, and the Packers. Going against the Jaguars, I can't see them losing four straight against, especially with the team of their caliber. I don't think they seem to be a bit out of sync themselves. I don't think all these new pieces have gone accustomed to each other yet. And I think that could hurt them down the road. But against a team like the Jaguars, they're just so much better. They should easily win this game. If Sean McVay wasn't as good of a coach as he is, I would be tempted to pick the Jaguars here. But I think going into this week, they'll lay out a very specific game plan to run the football. Daryl Henderson and Sonny Michelle will play their game. Cooper Cup will do his thing. They'll come out victorious. But the Rams' struggles are in no way uh, arbitrary to the teams they've played against because they haven't played good games. It's not like they played and battled against these teams and did a good job and they just came out unlucky. They weren't good. So I think that's something we have to look at coming down the stretch. That being said, Jaguars are the Jaguars. Rams are going to beat them. All right, let's move on to the next one where we have the Washington football team and the Raiders. Washington uh, yet to play. They play Monday night. We record these Sunday night, if you guys didn't know. Um, And they go up against a Raiders team that upset the Cowboys at home on Thanksgiving, Derek Carr looked great. Um, Hunter Renfro underrated. He's been great, really filling in the role of Henry Ruggs um, since he's been out. Um, and, and then, you know, obviously Washington yet to see them play, but as of recent, they've, I would say trending up, maybe not very, very at a very high angle, but I wouldn't say they've looked awful. Uh, this is a, again, this is kind of a, I don't know what about this game. Just, just, I don't even know how to explain it. it. It's like two teams that aren't great, but aren't really bad. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes I just speak. 
Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like when I look at the two logos, I think of something I can't elaborate on it. Uh, but never mind. Welcome to Keen's mind, uh, Serge. What do you got for this game? I feel like this is a weird game because I feel like it's the type of game that the Raiders would lose, and Washington have kind of picked up in recent weeks. But the Raiders just came off a big win, a win that they desperately needed in the AFC playoff race. But I feel like now logic maybe almost would point to them dropping a game against a team like Washington that they yeah. have some they have some weapons. They have McLaurin, they have Gibson, Heineke can be good on his day. And they have a defense that still has potential even without uh, Chase Young. But the difference here, I think, is home field advantage for the Raiders. And again, they have improved. And I think they have um, defense especially improved. And I think they will barely, barely win this game. But I wouldn't be surprised at all for an upset here. I'm going to go with the Washington football team in this one. Mm. Because I think they've been very good down the stretch. We haven't seen them playing uh their monday night game but i can assume that they're going to beat seattle because they suck right now and i think that going off of a three-game win streak in which they beat the buccaneers they win so i'm gonna go with the washington football team yeah uh i am gonna i'm gonna go with the raiders um i'm gonna stick to being the, the safer pick I couldn't explain this one to you. I think it's two teams. I think I'm just going to trust the Raiders offense a little bit more, Um, you know, with chase young out for the rest of the season. I think the Raiders are able to capitalize. Move on to the next game. I think this is the last game is Monday night. I might be wrong. No, this is, so yeah, yeah. You got this Ravens. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, Divisional matchup, Niner Seahawks. This to me would generally be like fantastic game. I'm watching this. The 49ers will blow them out. The Seattle Seahawks are not the same team that they were three years ago. Russell Wilson has second uh, second half of the season syndrome. They are not getting anywhere near it, past their prime, clean house, San Francisco. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say the exact same thing. Giants, go get Russell Wilson. Next game, another great divisional matchup, Steelers, Ravens. If the Bengals game was any indicator of how this game will go, the Ravens will put up 70 points on the Steelers. If the Bengals are putting up 41 on you, the Steelers are going to run a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to – obviously, they're not going to put up 70 points. I'm going to go for the Ravens here. Again, this is quite an easy one. You guys know we've all been saying it. Big Ben should not have been the Steelers quarterback this year or last year. He's going on for too long. He doesn't have longevity. This is a Ravens win easily. Yeah. What's weird to me is that the Ravens are one of the most inconsistent teams in the AFC at the number one seed. That is a very scary proposition. I think going against a weak Steelers defense, especially against the run, I think the Ravens should be able to easily win this game. This is this week's edition of what is going on in the NFL. And I'm going with <laughs> the Steelers here. Uh, oh, wow. They have the defense and just avoid completely what happened today because that's what's happened recently in the NFL. There's no such thing as success in consecutive weeks for any team in the NFL. <laughs> Give me the Raiders because they can shut down Lamar Jackson's running angles with TJ Watt on one side, Cameron Haywood on the other, and their linebackers closing in. Only reason I'm saying it, their offense might suck. They are going to be able to do it. All right, the Steelers. Steelers. Yeah. All right. Last game, Monday Night Football. Division one, Broncos, Chiefs, Chiefs on bye week. That is why I'm going to convincingly give give this game to the Chiefs. I don't think the Broncos win back-to-back games in this division. Again, they've, they've played the role of upsetter, um, but I'm going to go for the Chiefs here. Uh, I think they're back in that Super Bowl groove, um, so I'm going to go for the Chiefs, and, and they're, they're definitely climaxing. Um, yeah. at the, I mean, th- of course the Chiefs are climaxing at the exact right time in the season, um, but I'm going to go for the Chiefs here. Yep, Chiefs, not much else to say. Big Sunday night game. Yeah. Big Sunday night win for them. Most dangerous things in football. <laughs> Richard Sherman on drugs. Okay. My God, Dylan. Jesus Christ. New New England Patriots defense in a playoff game. Mm -hmm. Andy Reid after a bye week. Yeah. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs. Yep. Well said. Well, um, that's what that's a way to end it. I don't know. No, we got one more. Patriots Bills. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's a big one. Oh yeah. Wait. All right. Yeah. You're actually. Okay. Uh, We don't. Do we need the slide? I mean. Yeah, we we got it. All right. Let's move on to the next game. Patriots Bills. This this is gonna be a this is going to be a fantastic game. This is gonna be a show. This is gonna be a incredible game. We don't have too much time. We all say it at once. End it well. Uh, Let's go in order. All right. I'm 
Patriots. I'll go Patriots as well, actually. I'm going to go Bills. I don't think that the Patriots have beaten a good enough team for me to go with the Patriots. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Key and McDermott, Dylan Schaum, Serge Carly, NFL Week 13 predictions. Make sure you guys follow us on social media. Subscribe and comment your picks down below. We respond to all comments. TikTok, we're doing a lot more TikToks. And we post other videos weekly on the NFL draft and current news in the NFL. This was Key McDermott, the Giants fan, Dylan Schaum, the Dolphins fan, and Serge Carly. The Jets fan. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and taking time out of your day.